Hello, welcome to another episode of the Live Cost Construction Experience. I'm delighted this week to be joined by a very recognizable builder for our Irish listeners. Peter Finn is both a builder on and off TV, having appeared on six different series of the TV show Room to Improve with well-known architect Dermot Bannon. He also starred in another TV hit show, Home Rescue, and we're delighted to carve some time out of his day to learn more about the man on the screen and what his day-to-day looks like as a managing director of MDS Construction. Peter Finn, you're very welcome to the Live Cost Construction Experience. How are you? How are we doing, Carol? Thanks a million for having me on. Good, good, great. You're very welcome. To tell us, we always start off with sort of getting a bit, a bit of context with the man behind the, the uh, business and the man behind the, the, the TV, I suppose. Where, where did your, bring us back, I suppose, where, where does your relationship with the construction industry or building even start? Yeah, I suppose it started straight after school. Um, I always had an interest in building. My mother and father built a house when I was younger, um, and I just loved hanging around the site when the, the construction was going on. And then kind of had a target of getting a trade as soon as um, I got out of school, and that's what I did. I, I served my apprenticeship as a carpenter, and um, I served it with a small builder, so I more got a, a full house building um, apprenticeship is the best way to describe it because we, we used to literally go into the greenfield site, mm-hmm. take the foundations and do everything um, from there to literally hand it over a fully finished house. So it was a it was a fantastic experience um, to get and gain. And from there then I went on and I, I you know, I done a bounce around with a few different people. I worked in Trinity College for a while. Um, I, I went then and went back to college and bought a build technology course. So I suppose I was always kind of targeting, targeting to move into construction management. Um, but I always really enjoyed the actual work aspect of it. So I suppose that's kind of where I've ended up. I um, have the, the MDS construction. I'm a director uh, with a, a Mark Lane as my business partner. And uh, I met Mark when both was working at Trinity College. And uh, there was a chap on Michael Duffy had MDS construction going on. He asked both of us to come on board with him. Mark went on first, so he came on, and then of course he, Michael passed away, and myself and Mark were kind of left with a decision: did we did we keep the company going, and what did we do? The Celtic Tiger went on his holidays in at the same time, so it was an interesting time in, in our lives, and we learned an awful lot there during the hard times. And uh, fortunately, we were able to keep things going, and we grew kind of from there. And um, TV side of things kind of came down where we. It was uh, an engineer that we'd done a job or uh, recommended us to Derma Bannon, and it all happened very, very quickly. And got a phone call, and and were asked to, to meet with uh, Jane from Coco Television and Derma Bannon himself. Who this was on the very first series, so nobody had to do who Derma was. And went and met him in a very small cafe in in Blanchardstown. The jobs around the corner, and we we went met him and went straight around the corner and looked at the job. Priced it and a week later we were on site. It was very, very quick. Um, so we've done the done the first series, went very well. Um, myself and Dermot got on quite well. Uh, I was, mm-hmm. let's say, the, the face of the company. I was the person that kind of represented the company. Um, then they asked us to do it the next year. And I kind of realized very quickly that the concept was not just about, you know, building. There was also a storyline kind of going with um, and I probably was the first builder to have a railway chairman and uh, kind of put him back in his in his box and they, they loved that so uh, the TV side of it then they kept uh, coming back to me uh, and, and to, to obviously our company asking us to do the show so we ended up doing six of them then you, you know we, we kind of took a little bit of a, a break from it uh, we, we priced a couple of the jobs but we didn't win them up. we'd been on it six times so We'd kind of been there and done that, if that makes sense. And, yeah. And, yeah. It's one of, I mean, for anyone that's listening, as I say, from the out, outset, anyone listening if, you know, from an uh, Irish listener base will be well aware of Room to Improve and, and its success here. Um, I actually didn't realise that you were, you were carpenter by, by trade and carpenter myself and obviously went to Bolton Street as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. So th- th- there you go. Uh, the the room to improve thing is is, is interesting because there's always this sort of you know the people that are familiar with working on, on sites will say ah you know that's that, that that's not real or you know that that can't be real. How re- how real is it? Yeah, well, believe it or not, r- room to improve is uh, is a very genuine look as to how a 
a job goes because pretty much what they do, it's a very clever concept from the, from the, the TV sort of point of view because they get someone else to pay for the job and they get the film it. And um, what the, the client gets or the homeowner gets is they get Dermot Bannon's uh, fees for free and they also get the comfort, I suppose, that the job is going to go well because, let's be honest, any builder is going to pull out the stops to make sure that the place looks really well at the end of the show. And so I suppose you get that. And then you get the, the moment of you and your family being on television, which is not the underestimate thing as well because it is an experiment to have to back on. So um, that, that's the way it works. And believe me, it, it, is, it is real. Like, uh, the stresses that are involved in it are, are, are fairly real. Costs and all that type of stuff. Um, but the one thing that annoys me about Run to Improve is that they, it, the costs are very tight on it, and I don't think they're a fair reflection on the market at the time because builders know if they go on a show that they, it's going to help them because they kind of have that on their CV. So they will put in, you know, usually a fairly tight price for to win the show, or sorry, to win the job. And then the shows get repeated quite a lot. So you could be looking at a show that's two or three years old and the market prices have changed. And um, put it in, in in kind of I suppose in reflection of is the show genuine? It pretty much is like Darren McBain and it's very much like the same on Teddy, the terrible nice fella. Uh, if you went and met him over a point, you'd have a great bit of pack at him. Uh, he's a bit more difficult to work with. He's very hard to get on the phone. He's a very busy man and he it doesn't go into massive amount of detail but then he comes on site and then he has the in his head. So that can be tricky to, to deal with. But um I know it's good. Like the other show that I've been doing is home rescue and that's one over three make over shops. There's no budget stress. Whereas in room to improve you have the same budget stress that you would have on an ordinary job. Um, yeah, I mean you, you touched on you, you touched on something there even that you're probably one of the first to have a a, a row with them. I mean can you have a proper row? I mean, if, if you're working on one of your jobs today with NDS and the architect is just not doing the right things, you're, you're, you're going to tell them what's going on. You're going to try and pull them in. Yeah. Uh, can you do that? Uh, yeah, well, look, you, you know, you have to represent yourself well. You don't want to be going around screaming and shouting and, you know, looking like uh, an unprofessional person. But at the same time, yeah, like, I, I, I suppose I knew how to play the game a little bit and I do a very similar kind of concept with, with Roisin, the, the, the home rescue show. The stresses are real. The difference in, in the new show is that there's time, time stresses. Uh, you do have that in room to improve as well because you have a finished date, the final film and date is given to you. You have to have that house finished by that date because there's a film crew booked in. You know, the final reveals are all booked in on a certain date. So it's not as if you say, oh, it's not going to be a job. That, was, that, that date can't change with so many um, expensive items hired in terms of you know, camera crews and all that stuff so booked in for those days. So, you know, there's stresses involved in that way. And when it comes to having the rails, you know, you have to be careful about what to do. But they do, like television, you've got to remember it's a TV show as well as uh, a, uh, not like a documentary, more a TV show. It's on, it's on 16 series, which like, is amazing for any TV show that won't be 16 series. It's just phenomenal, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the whole, yeah. The home rescue one is 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 interesting. Is that is that still going? Or are you going to be doing, yeah, it is doing that one again? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually filming one of the shows next week. Believe it or not, we've uh, we're halfway through filming the fourth series of home rescue, and um, it is going from strength to strength. It's a half an hour show. Different. It's a more light heart uh, look. Um, in in that one, the uh, the client gets an awful lot free. They pretty much get oh yes, free between so. The concept of that show is uh, the butter busters come in and they declutter the house and then with the help of Roisin and then we come in and the house butter and Roisin gives us for design and then we uh, take two rooms and we basically renovate two rooms. So they get everything for free there so we get like all the skips, uh, every like you know a team of people coming in and taking all your, your butter out. Some of the houses are very cluttered, some of them aren't that bad and then you get Roisin's design Ikea sponsor the show, so you get about five and a half, six grand for free Ikea gear. And then, of course, you get my crew as well. So, you know, that one, it's a very short course. It's done in, in three days, and it genuinely is done in three days. You, like, we work very long hours on it to get it done, and there's real stress um, in terms of trying to get the, you know, the job done and finish. 
But then, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be. I'm not like I'm not, I'm not a huge TV fan, but I, I am a sucker for yeah. a you know, home renovation show or yeah, a, yeah. a construction show. I do remember one of the home rescues. I remember I was living out in Australia actually, and uh, there was the one with um, <coughs> Austin and Muhammad. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. That was that got the, the biggest reaction of any job we ever done. It was the only time. What we did was we, we kind of took over from a dodgy builder, um, basically, and it was the old school dodgy builder scenario, which you don't see a lot of these days. To be honest with you, you know, you still get the odd, you know, fella that'll come in and you know do a bit of a shoddy, shoddy job. But this was really bad. Like this was the, 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 the Austin and Muhammad had picked up some boy off Facebook. They'd never met him before. He came in, he said he was going to do X, Y, and Z, and Muhammad went on holidays and it was left with Austin to do with this boy, and he just literally, they pulled the house apart, and when we came in, it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like someone had stopped in mid flight and had left, so we didn't really know the, the, the previous story, and there's obviously two sides to every story, so we were given the task of coming in, but there was a lot of bad stuff there that I had to, you know, it was electrics that was done, it was nowhere near how it was, uh, you know, just slabs stuff the walls that were right off. There's all sorts of stuff like that going on. So that was a big task for us. And we had to literally come in and take over from someone else that had done bad work, which is all from a builder's point of view, a really tricky situation. But uh, it was a very, it was one that was very close to people's hearts. And mm. it was a, it, it was a very unusual relationship between us and Muhammad. It was a very genuine one. My first met him. I told him about what this, this old man being taken advantage of here but actually quite the opposite we're really genuinely friends we still are today you know and uh, the two of them had a very good relationship and they were put in a very awkward position where this guy was coming in and basically taking advantage of them and taking their money so yeah. I suppose that one was a very rewarding one to be involved in but the whole lot is like when I first was asked to do a show I didn't, feel, I didn't understand how much the, 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 the clients or the, or the homeowners I suppose is the best way to call it would get out of it it, there's always usually a storyline in the background somewhere, a reason why the house has got it buttered or the reason why we're needed. And it's it's very rewarding when you get a phone call that night after you come home, whether you be at home with Sharon and my wife and absolutely knackered after three days of really hard work and anything you get a phone call from home and really crying down the phone and happiness after you know what it's needed. So it's rewarding from that point of view all this yeah. so we're giving a bit back to that, you know. Yeah, and I was—I mean, as you say, thankfully um, we don't get too much of that sort of road building stuff. Mm. Not as much as no. we once had, and I suppose with you know regulations and stuff like CIF trying to push out through Syria and stuff does help. Um, I mean, so you've gone from that. I mean, quite quite a jump actually when you think about them small little jobs that you're doing on home rescue up to what you're sort of doing now with with NDS. Can you sort of yes. describe MDS to, 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 to our listeners and, you know, what, what your day-to-day looks like in there? Yeah, well, I suppose we, we call ourselves a medium-sized builder. We, we would uh, would have started off in, you know, your, your one man in a van was what I was. I was going around doing small extensions and renovations. And, and I linked in with Mark and Michael at the time. We were taking on slightly bigger jobs. So at the moment, we would do jobs uh, that would, we would be basically between kind of 750,000 to a million and a half, two million, that size of project. Um, do an awful lot of renovation work, conservation work as well. So usually homes that have got, you know, that type of requirement to it as well. So we've gained an awful lot of experience over the years working with different architects and, and poor uh, engineers. And, uh, and uh, I suppose we're, we're now at the point where we've got 15 people directly employed. And uh, we've got um, our own US project manager and um, foreman. So we need that size of job, I suppose, really to maintain what, what the crew that we've got going on. And um, but yet then next week I'll be jumping back and doing three days with only two or three of my lads in, in, mm-hmm. in one of the home rescue houses. I like doing that to keep in touch with the tools and keep in touch with the with, with, with uh, you know the hand the hands on stuff of course. Now thankfully our our own business is gone. You know, quite well for us. It was very, very hairy. I was carrying them off but during the bad times. I remember listening to one of your previous podcasts there, uh, the chap from America and who was involved in the accountancy side of things. Can't remember his name you now, but he, when he, as he was telling the stories about people walking and there's being cash flow there, but then when uh, when all the bills were paid out, there wasn't much left in the in the kitty, and 
like it really gave me flashbacks to some of the periods of time that myself and Mark had. And you know, I, I truly do believe you learn more in the bad times than you do in the good times. And then yeah. I suppose we, you know, we've taken that experience with us and we learned. Um, you're heading towards the. You mean you're you're going from the small job now up to um, developments? Uh, you're going to take on a yeah. a large development. Yeah, so that's the next step. Um, was, we, we had a very successful project completed with a with a chap who was eager to get into some investment and to buy a bit of property and do a development. And it took us a while to kind of find find the right one, and um, so we've ended up. Uh, you know, we basically teamed up to buy uh, a site in, in Rattan Lion in County Mead that has a uh, planning permission for 16 houses and for a whole farm sod and that next month. Uh, deliver that then next year. So uh, the, the development's called Ring Park and it's in mainly three bed homes. Kind of ideally suited towards the first time buyer market. So it's very exciting. Um, your your life cost will be very important to us on that one, to be honest with you, because we're. Uh, We've we started using using our life cost on a couple of jobs, but to be honest with you, that was that was the main project that we kind of had our eye on to be sure for that cost on. So that's a, a very exciting um, year for us, I suppose, ahead because uh, it's our first time doing it, and a lot of a lot of uh, things have actually fallen in our favour because of the fact that uh, people with the COVID situation going on have. Uh, been living around their own homes now, but I suppose people living in apartments anyway, west area and out in that kind of, uh, general area of need. Someone who's looking to upscale or someone who wants to kind of put roofs around their own home, people are doing it now, they're being more proactive because they're kind of had time to settle and find the team. Anyone who's got um, mortgage approval is kind of looking to use that up before things might change on that as well. So the, the move to the country uh, is, is kind of on a, a lot of people's mind. And, with the whole uh, technological um, revolution that's happened with COVID going on, people can move from home and not get that successful. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, there's, 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 the country, you know? there's definitely a shift, and you know, the, 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 you know, you can see what's happened around the sort of large commercial buildings around the uh, around middle of town, like it's just the demand won't be there. Uh, having Good staff that can work remotely is, is going to be key. Therefore, uh, the commuter towns are going to become quite valuable, actually, I, I, I would say. Yeah. Um, hard, hard to have a discussion without sort of touching on COVID. Um, yeah. What was your, I suppose, what was your reaction when you sort of knew we're going into lockdown, we've got to lock down these sites, and I suppose, how, how did you deal with that? I suppose it was the same as everybody else. You were trying to, you started off hearing about this virus, but it was on foreign land, and you know, you know they're going to wipe jobs. The point was that the closer it was coming, and um, you start seeing, you know, all that really bad stuff that was happening. Work that all that realization. that we it is going to affect us. We everyone knew so little about the virus, and we we're all trying to learn. And we were. I suppose we'll never forget those days when Leo Radford was making his announcement and the whole countries were the whole country stopped and listening to you know what was happening. The Friday that he locked down the building industry was tough because you know we had four or five sites on the go Friday after he said it and they were like supposed to stay within their uh, I think it was a two or five kilometer radius at that point where you live. There was a lot of uncertainty that you didn't have enough time to lock sites that surety wise. It was it was scary times. It was it was, it was was, well, it was for everybody. Like a construction industry, in terms of on-site construction industry, we're lucky because the fact that we were outdoors, you know, predominantly meant that it was viewed that it was one of the last uh, industries to close down. So we were lucky with that, and we were one of the the important to open back up again. But look, there hasn't been a person on earth, which is a very unusual thing that hasn't been affected by COVID. And I, I actually think people, you know, should be talking about. It. I don't it shouldn't be all doing with gloom either. It should be like you know, okay. We're all living in this situation. How do we, how do we, you know, make the best of it? And how do we kind of move on from here? So, first thing yeah. we did actually was once, once uh, we started getting contact with people then who were trying to keep their business open. So we opened, you know, open up the business. We started doing COVID screens and kind of adapted. And we have our own little workshop. So we had one of our lads in making screens, and I was myself back and forth around fitting them, and more, you know, looking 
for something to do, but also to keep a very small tone over on the football bar that we go. Um, you know, so we kind of adapted it. But going forward, obviously, there's an awful lot of protocols you have to do on site. Um, it does slow you down a little bit in terms of, you know, you have to be a lot more organized and, and you have to premeditate your steps of, of construction, which is a good thing. It kind of makes you think of it a bit more than you used it. Um, but there's a lot of stuff kind of happening. I think the biggest thing that happened is that I'm stop and take breaths. I'm glad that that happened to me. I you know, they've actually, instead of you know running around at 100 miles an hour, you're forced into a sort of a slowdown. Again, it's a bit like what we were saying about the country and, and kind of changing their whole life work. That's because we had a chance to take breaths. Yeah. Really there's, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I. So I'm just trying to put it, we'll, we'll be corrected. That's probably the best way I can put it. Like the way, the ways and the ways we operate, uh, I feel that we could have inherited from previous generations. I, I think could be just due for a correction a little bit. And we're, we're gonna, there's going to be new ways to approach stuff um, and new ways of thinking, I suppose, it would, would be the the best way to, to put that. I mean, it's an enormous challenge ahead. I mean, for you guys, you're obviously pl plowing on, which is just great to hear. Um, You've been very kind with your time, Peter. Like, where can people find out more about you and MDS? Well, we have our we have our website, uh, MDS uh, Construction um, dot IE, and uh, obviously, new series of home rescue coming up. So you'll see yeah. see my my face having more arguments with, with Roshin on, <laughs> on TV, um, and then you know, our, I suppose our uh, we have a couple of big jobs. Please keep an eye over that, and you know it'd be great if people could go and, and check out the development. That's greenport.ie is the website for that. Um, and I suppose the last word to people out there: stay positive, keep keep working. You know, every, anyone who works hard in any environment will always come out top, and that's the attitude. Stay yeah, positive and, and keep pushing on. Absolutely, we will we we we'll link up your the, the links to, to the development and and to you guys as well in the in the show notes on site so people 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 can reach out. Peter, thanks for your time. Good chat, man. Thanks very much, girl. No worries. Cheers.